Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Surya, your favorite sewing friend. And today I have a vlog for you on how I upcycled these men's jeans and turned them into women's jeans. I did have a chat about it in my pattern review of the Megan Nelson Dawn jeans pattern, uh, but I decided to share with you a vlog on my second pair of jeans that I did. So without further ado, here is the vlog. Warning, it is a bit long, so if you're not interested in this, you do not watch this video. <laughs> Very large. They are men's jeans, they are by this brand, Bull's Head. Um, I just bought them because I like the colour. It just says, cotton. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go in now with a voiceover because I didn't realise that my camera was um, making all these weird noises because the strap kept bumping against the microphone. It was super annoying, so I'm just going to narrate to you what I'm thinking here. Basically I just tried on the jeans to show you guys how wide they are, one, uh, and also that I do like the wideness of the leg part so I'm going to salvage that and I also want to salvage a lot of the jeans so that I don't have to keep um, making new pattern pieces and uh, taking more time so I'm just going to not rip apart the pockets um, and all that kind of stuff. I do have to reconstruct the fly front and I will have to seam rip off the back pockets. But yeah, basically I just want to tell you guys in this clip that I really like the straight legness and wide legness of this jean. So I'm going to preserve that and I'm going to be using the straight leg pattern uh, from the Dawn Jeans by Megan Nilsson as a guide. So that's the first step. I can reuse the zip. It is like 17 centimeters long. Seam ripped. I think the pieces are quite large, so I will be able to salvage quite a bit. Just have to reshape them, that's all, to be a more feminine style and to actually fit me. So I'm just looking at the measurements on the Megan Nelson jeans pattern. I am a size 12 in the hips and a size 10 in the waist. I want to have a slightly wider look down in the hips and the legs so I'm going to go with a size 14 down there and then I'm going to grade in at the waist um, to a size 10 or an 8. Day two and I am still finalizing the pattern pieces. I think I've graded in between sizes correctly. So I corrected all my pattern pieces and now I'm going to check that the pattern pieces fit onto the jeans. I want to try to preserve as much of the jeans as possible. I don't think I'm going to be following Megan Nelson's pattern to the T. This time around, I think I'm just going to try to mishmash it together with what I already have. So I'm just going to check it now so and see what I can salvage and what I do need to seam rip again. As you can see, I have laid out the pattern piece on my existing back piece. Um, I need to cut in this much. I think I will have to remove the pockets because they're slightly too close to the edge. That's where the pocket ends and I can feel it here and then that's where the pocket's meant to be. So I'll probably just seam rip the pocket out because I've learned from experience that if you don't do that um, it will definitely probably end up looking a bit mismatched and wonky once I put it all together. So I think I can get away with just cutting out this part to make it fit my hips and stuff and then this part I want to actually keep the width of the leg I quite like the baggy look so I think I'll just cut here and sort of try to blend it I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do here <laughs> 
Okay, so what I did was I just added a bit of paper here and I extended it out so it could curve outwards like that and back into this point. So as you can see, it's a kind of wide leg-ish pant now. And now I'm going to do the same for the front side and see how that looks. So as you can see, the front side is slightly shorter here. So I want to extend it out because I want to keep that wide-ish leg. So I'm just going to add some paper here and then curve it inwards. Uh, yeah, so hopefully it will look relatively as okay as the back piece. <laughs> So this is what I've done to the front one. I've just added some paper and extended it out so it could keep it on its straight wider leg line. And I'm um, just gonna cut in a little bit here. So instead of cutting in way like that, I'm just going a little bit. So now that I've done that, I'm going to pin my pieces down to the pattern and I'm going to cut it out and then Hopefully it works out. So before I start cutting out the back pieces, I'm just going to seam rip the pockets off of the back just so I can um, reposition them later because I'm for sure they will be wonky, so I'm just going to seam wrap them now. So I removed this pocket and um, it has so much lint in there from possibly a tissue eel that got washed <laughs> over and over, but it's all crusty. Eel. Okay, I'm going to have to clean that out. Ugh. Okay, so I've got my back piece pinned on. I'm going to cut all the way up and then I'm also going to cut straight up across the yoke so that I can make it fit the new back in every front. I think this is how we do it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so now that I've recut everything, um, I've noticed now that the rivets here are way too close to the sides. So I'm gonna have to rip that one out. This one's fine, but yeah, these side ones need to be taken out. So I'm just gonna go and do that with my pliers. This one and... So what you want to do is just grab them on either end and then you just want to pull. There you go. Okay, so now that I've secured the pockets back into place after removing that rivet, I think the first part is to reconstruct the fly zip. So I'm going to attempt to do that. I recycled this fly zip, so I just need to give it a press. And I've got the fly front here. But I think I may need to trim it back. So this is the fly extension. You can see this one is a little bit longer, so I might uh, trim that. And then the fly zip, yes, the fly, this one, yes, it's just a little bit longer. Mm. Okay, I have a problem. So this is the original zipper. It's actually... 20 centimeters long 
Yeah, see, 20 centimeters long. The instructions tell me to use a 17 centimeter long zipper, so. I'm going to look up a video on how to shorten zippers, and I found one that says, how to shorten a zipper like a pro. So I'm gonna watch that to figure out how to shorten this zipper because I really can't be bothered going out to buy a new zipper. successfully remove the teeth that I no longer need and remove and I've moved the uh, stopper down here before it was up there and now I've moved it down there so I'm just gonna cut and now my zip is the right length hi guys so it's day three it's the weekend now um, and I'm gonna go back to doing this I need to trim this fly extension just by a little bit so that my zip can fit. I managed to cut the zip so that it would fit to 17 centimeters. So now I just need to trim this back to fit the pattern. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off the raw edges of this piece and then also this bottom part here of the fly. Okay, so I just did a zigzag stitch on the edges to finish off all the raw edges because my overlocker is still dead. I haven't yet taken it to... Uh, repair yet so <laughs> but you know this exact stitch turned out relatively good as you can see it's not bad oh the mowing stopped okay so now to start putting together the fly i've done this before i'm sure it will be fine to do it again right instructions Okay, so I put my zipper on the fly extension. The zipper stop ends at where the notch is. Oops, where is it? So there is the notch here. And then I'm gonna sew down here 0.6 centimeters on this side from the edge. So I've sewed the zipper on to the fly extension and now I just need to put the fly extension against the front pant leg. So I'm just going to flip this on like that and sew down here 0.6 centimeters from the edge. And then after that we're going to press it open. Yes, it should work out okay. <laughs> So I just gave this a good press now that I've sewn it on and I also clip the seam just underneath the fly extension by 0.6 centimeters. So when it folds back, oh my god my cat is meowing so much, I think she wants to go outside. Okay so now I have to switch to a top stitching thread and stitch all the way down here. So I have to be careful. Top stitch, what does it say? Switch your thread to top stitching thread and top stitch on the piece one sixteenth of an inch from the seam. What is one sixteenth of an inch from the seam? Okay, well, yes, that's very close to the edge. So top stitch very close to the edge. Good man. 
Gudeman, Gudeman, Gutuman. Narrow here, kind of goes a bit wonky here. <laughs> oh well, whoops. Okay, so now it's time to do the fly on the left pant leg, front, left front pant leg. Okay, so I pin the fly. Yeah, I'll show you. So I've pinned the fly on the left front leg, so right sides facing each other. I'm gonna sew down this line. What does it say? Fifth, five eighth of an inch. What is five eighth of an inch? It's one and a half centimeters. Okay, so five eighth of an inch. So one and a half centimeters, slow down this line. And then after that, you clip here 0 0.6 in. And then um, I think I sew them together after that. I don't need this top stitch thread anymore. Just gonna use normal thread and thread, normal thread and a normal foot. Oh, clip into the same five eighth of an inch, so one and a half centimeters in. Pressed, so the fly is sewn on, press it this way, clipped. Okay, that. Okay, so now that we've pressed this onto this side, it's all nice and pressed, the fly, I need to top stitch down here. One sixteenth from the edge, that's like what, zero point something. I looked this up just a second ago, I can't remember. Zero point one six. So very close to the edge. Hopefully I top stitch a little bit better. Let's see. Ooh. Hmm, top stitching didn't turn out so bad. Sort of. Okay, it's time to put the two front pieces together now. Um, but my cat is sitting on the other piece, so... GG, I have to get off my clothes. Please get off the front piece. Okay, so this front piece, this front piece, right sides together. Okay, so I put the two front pieces together, right sides facing, and then so this is the fly, that's the fly extension on the other side, or the other piece. They say to base stitch this, so a very long stitch, because you're going to cut it open later. Anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and base stitch that. Oh wait, no, I meant to base stitch the crotch section, the part under the zip. Oh, thank god. Okay, so this part, the part underneath the zip part, is where you're going to base stitch it. Base stitch, yeah, put the two front pieces together with right sides facing each other, lining up the crotch seam. Pin in place and just base together the crotch seam below the zipper with regular thread. Oh, I was going to make a really big boo-boo before that. Oops. Yeah. I'm just going to pin those together and base stitch. Okay, so pin together, but we're just base stitching this part. Five eighth of an inch. What's that? That is 0 0.6 centimeters, I think. No, five eighth of an inch is one and a half centimeters. God, I have to keep remembering these inches. Sorry, I don't work in inches. We're in Australia. We work in metric system. So inches to me is like... 
my stitching of crotch is done. Now it says to open up your front from the right side. What? Okay, so we're sewing the zipper tape to the fly only on the back side, so. So sew a line from the zipper tape edge 0.6 centimeters away from the edge and then like super close to the teeth about 0.15 I think yeah here and here tape to fly only do not sew on the actual front leg just these two together <laughs> Sorry for the poor lighting, but I just, it's kind of nighttime now and I've been lazy. Um, I just did some top uh, basting stitch here around the outside edge of the fly on this back side. So I could use this basting stitch as a guide to do my top stitching around the fly front. Um, I think it's coming together slowly. So I'm just gonna top stitch that and then I'm gonna do another top stitching line 0.6 centimeters from that line and yeah fly will be almost done hi so i managed to finish some of the pant last night i um top stitched the fly front it looks rather weird but i'll show you so usually your fly front is kind of a curved look but i don't know what happened there i just i i don't know how to curve like sew on the curve it just ended up looking like a square so the fly front is done as you can see i think i still need to put bar tacks in here and here or wherever um megan nelson says to put them but yeah so far it's looking okay ish uh so i'm gonna work on the back piece now <laughs> And these are my two pockets. Okay, so in Megan and Nelson's instructions, she says to put the back pockets on first and then sew the back pieces together. But I'm going to put on the pockets last because I just want to make sure that um, when I do sew them together, it's even ish. Uh, yes, so let's. Let's see, just in case I make adjustments to the fit, um, I don't want the pockets to be off like a bit skewed, so I'll probably, it's probably better just to do them after everything's in place, and then I can move around the pockets however I like. All I need to do is get the two back sides, or well, the back pieces, and right sides together, pin down this line, and sew down here. I'll do a basting stitch first, just to, just to make sure. <laughs> Sewing down here. The old pockets were so close together, good thing I unpicked them. Oh gosh. Okay, so I just roughly pinned the pants in place. Um, I feel kind of um, in danger at the moment because there are so many pins in this, but I think it fits. It's fitting pretty good. I mean, I wanted it to have a baggy look, but still fit around the waist. So I think like this part here, Still needs to come in maybe about two centimeters. Yeah, so I might take in that. But yeah, other than that, yeah, it's turned out relatively okay. Or should be turning out okay. Can you can barely tell that I did such a dodgy on the uh, fly, but yeah, so maybe I'll take in this by two centimeters. Yay! 
sort of success. Also, I cut myself. Well, I pricked myself really badly on one of the pins and in my haste to find Band-Aid, I just used some sticky tape. I need to fix myself up now, so. Um, I snapped a needle and then it got stuck in, <laughs> stuck in the jeans and then I panicked because I really didn't want to have to uh, I don't know, abandoned my machine with the jeans attached to it. So yes, I just pulled out the bobbin and I had to actually cut the needle away from the shaft. Uh, okay. New needle. Try again. Um, I just realized my needles were very blunt, so when I changed them over to a new needle, it uh, went through the fabric really easily, and I should have changed my needles before. Anyway, so this is my super dodgy top stitching. I don't think you can see it, but it is, it is rather wonky. See? It's like straight, 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 blah, straight, yeah, so that, uh, I can't be bothered I'm picking it. Whatever. Can't really tell. This also, this is like off. It's not completely aligned. Oh well. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew in the pockets. I think this is even enough. I don't know. Eh. So I'll just talk you through what I managed to do last night. I repositioned the pockets properly, so now they sit kind of even. Yeah. Good enough, I think. Yes, I top stitched these on, and now I'm going to ah sew the inseam. So this part crutch um, section yeah. so I'm just sewing down the inseam inside leg and the crotch area and then I will finish off the seams with a zigzag stitch because my overlocker is still broken and then I will press the seams to the front side and then top stitch on the other side <sighs> Oh my gosh, you guys, something amazing happened. I finished. I did the inseam. I haven't top stitched yet, but it all lined up. Do you want to see? I'm so happy. Look. Look. It's lined up pretty much perfectly. Oh my gosh, I never knew you could be this happy about anything, but um, yay. Yay me. <laughs> so this is what the pants look like on at the moment pretty pretty standard straight leg looking jean the only thing i noticed was um there's like a part here which sort of sticks out this part and i think it's because actually no i know it's because i made the pattern piece uh not straight it weirdly went outwards and then inwards again why um so it's not sitting right i'm just gonna turn this inside out and straighten up this edge on the side and hopefully that should fix it and it should be like properly straight <laughs> but yeah so far it looks pretty good i think the fit is uh pretty much there so after I straighten up the sides, I will put on the waistband. Yeah! Okay, so I just removed all of the little... Uh, what are these? Oh my god, I'm having a brain fart. Um, waistband loops? Belt loops. There you go. Got there. I've just removed... <laughs> all of these belt loops from the waistband. 
So here it is. I'm going to attempt to recycle the buttonhole and the button. So this waistband is extremely large, so I'll probably have to cut into the back and then stitch it together to make that happen. Right? Okay. How hard can it be? Be fine. Okay. So first things first, I put, uh, I just stitched on the belt loops to the jeans. I put in the belt loops in where they should be, right sides facing right side. And now I have to figure out how to do this waistband. Okay, so what I did was I pinned, this is the button, oh wait, no, this, this is the button, no, this is the buttonhole, this is where the button is. I just pinned it on either side and then pinned it all the way around and then found where the excess is, snipped that, sewed it down, and now I'm going to sew the waistband, <laughs> try it on and see if it fits ish before I uh, set anything in place permanently. So let's see if this works because I feel like I may need to make this smaller. But yeah, let's try it for now. Oh my gosh, I think it fits. It's just a little bit loose here. But, generally I think the fit is good. What I have to do now is top stitch all of this and then put the belt loops back on. Yay! Yes, I have finally finished the jeans. They are not perfect. I will show you. So, here they are. Still kind of weird on the sides, but I fixed it up. Um, yeah, they look good-ish. I put the waistband on and I actually had to hand sew a lot of it because my machine was, I don't know, I changed the needles and everything, but it's a little bit weak and it kept bunching up somewhere. I, whatever, it just had a, had a moment. So I hand sewed the button part and the buttonhole area here. I just hand sewed around this part to keep it all in place. I hand stitched quite a bit of it um, and then my machine sort of did some of the other parts. But yeah, it uh, turned out relatively okay. I wore it out today to the art gallery and I was pretty pleased with how it looked. No, oh, I like this style a lot more than the tapered look because, I don't know, I can actually move around <laughs> oops yeah I can actually like move around and not be super uncomfortable these are a pretty good fit I really like them so I think I'm gonna keep that pattern piece and make a couple more maybe if I find some other jeans it's not bad success so that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. I am surprised if you made it all the way to the end. If you found this vlog interesting and inspiring to you or whatever and you'd like to see more vlogs like this where I make stuff from old stuff, uh, yeah, then just hit the subscribe button, do all that YouTube stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!